Hi guys, I'm Shmi and I'm currently sat inside my Ferrari FF, which as you may know if you watch my recent video, the five things I love about the FF, one of them was the practicality and the fact that it can be an everyday car and I'm trying to use it for that purpose. My 675 LT and my Cayman GT4, both a bit hardcore, the FF, even though it's a Ferrari with a V12, is a car I can drive all the time. We have four seats, it has four wheel drive, a very clever trick four wheel drive system, so I've done a lot of miles. I've had it for about three months, done something like 4,000 miles in the car already, um, driving it all the time. And of course, I picked it up and I think it was five days after I got the car, I drove it down to the south of France. Um, and recently, only a few weeks ago, drove it back home to England, drove it all the way up via Paris back to the United Kingdom. So I've been driving it in sort of warm environments, nice climates, but I want to keep using it every day. And it is, of course, now winter here in England. And winter means slightly sketchy roads if it snows i don't exactly own an appropriate car to drive except for this one so i'm going to be driving this car every day all the way through winter january february march um i'm hoping the weather's going to be on my side but if it isn't there's one thing that's going to keep me on the road and that is the tires so this car comes as standard with Pirelli P0 tires which as it happens are the same tires i have on my mclaren 675 um, standard Pirelli P0, which is their sort of all-season uh, performance sport tyre. Now, you can get the P0 Corsa, which is a summer version of the tyre. A little bit uh, more grip in the right environments, but less grip in, in the cold, sort of wet. Um, or you can do the sort of standard tyre on the McLaren, which I'm hopefully going to put on there in due course, which is the Trofeo R, which is the sort of semi-slick, um, just road legal, proper racing, exciting tyre. But what I'm going to do on this car is take off the P0s. I'm gonna keep them because they're perfectly good tires with lots of life left. These tires were actually new not that long ago following a, a puncture I had in France. So I'm gonna keep these tires, but I'm gonna change them to a set of Pirelli Soto Zero. That is Pirelli's winter tire. The fitment of course will be correct and matching for this car, but I will have winter tires on it. And that's gonna mean that I can keep using the car in any conditions. Basically when it's cold, under about seven or eight degrees, winter tires have a whole new degree of grip that summer tires could basically only dream of. So even though this car has four wheel drive at low speeds, with winter tires, I'm gonna have all the grip I should possibly need to keep me on the road. So let's head inside here, to Storford Performance Tires, and take a look at the Soto Zeros that have turned up already. looking very clean and shiny. I had it cleaned up just for today. It was a total mess before. That will be parked just into the bay. Meanwhile, here we have the winter Soto Zeros. These are the tyres that are going to be going onto the FF today. And the first thing obviously you can tell if you've never seen a winter tyre before is how there are all these extra tread lines um, inside the sort of main sections of rubber. And that of course is so that you have extra grip in bad conditions, in the rain, in the snow. They're obviously made out of a different compound as well. Um, there's a lot of technical work that goes into all of this, but the reason for this is, of course, uh, to work better in colder temperatures. Noises of cars moving around behind me. But uh, these tyres are gonna go onto the car over there in the bay, in the FF dimensions, 285, 35, R20, it's an interesting system for the sort of width of the tyre, the profile and of course the diameter of the rim, the alloy wheel. And then for the front ones, we've got 235, slightly narrower of course. Not actually that big in the Ferrari. You have a slightly smaller fitment for winter tyres, less surface area means you have more weight on the surface area, well more weight per square inch or however you'd like to look at it and that of course means slightly better traction and grip. So the car will be lifted and each of the wheels taken off and get them changed around and turned into the winter tyres. Tyre swapping has started and one of the reasons I'm down here at the venue, which is a pro tyre venue, is because it's part of the Pirelli Performance Centre network. So it's one of the PPCs, which means they're going to look after a car like this properly. They're not going to scratch rims. They're going to obviously make sure it's all done properly. The wheels are torped up for the correct figures. Basically, you can see there's a Range Rover here too. This is the kind of place you want to come to do tyres properly. So we're just swapping first on the rears and then we'll come on to the fronts. 
Um, in case you don't know, if you've never changed tyres on a car, actually I might just show you what goes into it because it's, I guess it's kind of interesting to think. It's something you do on any car, any type of car. Just you want to be extra careful, of course, when you're doing it on a car like this, on a Ferrari. So that means basically finding the correct jacking points using some sort of soft material or wood underneath so that you don't damage anything. Um, and getting it all done absolutely perfectly. So let's we'll hold fire for a minute and then we'll follow the process on this tyre. First thing, find the right jacking point, lift the car up a notch, then slightly loosen the bolts on the wheel. Lift it up the rest of the way to take the pressure off the tyre, and then it will be a case of taking out the wheel bolts, the five, in the centre. Leaving the one at the top till last to support the wheel. And then, uh, getting ready to delicately remove it afterwards. That tyre has got a little bit dirty. <laughs> we'll come over now to the machine where the next stage of this is going to happen. See the final of the new tyres here ready to go on. Open the valve, let the air out. Placing the tyre, removing the uh, centre cap there. Now this is where equipment comes into hand. This is going to make it easy to get this tyre off and then get the next one on. Pushes it over and it's off and then we've just got the wheel with the tyre pressure monitoring sort of valve sensor set up as well. It's being so careful of those things of course, very important. Prepare the new tyre, ready to go on. It's going to make it easier to install without damaging anything. Get a little bit slippier. Obviously make sure it's the right way around, the right tyre. And reverse the process using the machinery to pull the edge of the tyre down over the outside edge of the alloy. Before then doing the same, pull the top in. See the cool thing about this is they keep it just back from the so that nothing gets scratched. All in. Inflate the tire. We've checked the pressures already. Obviously, that's always going to be different for every car, every type of tire with the Soto Zeros and the effect. Spray the. Um Oh. Once that pops, the, the glue I will move out the way. Yeah, don't. I don't want to get sprayed by the glue. <laughs> so the pressure's being inflated. Um, the front's on this car. Uh, 2.1 bar on the rear is 2. The tyre has been over inflated and then gets deflated afterwards, so back down to the right amount. And this is more or less ready to come back over to the car. Valve cap on. And off we go. Before we're back on the car though, it needs balancing, so this is the use of some little weights just to make sure the wheel is perfectly balanced. You do this of course for all four wheels, using the computer to sort of completely accurately weigh them and detect if there are sort of any parts of the diameter that are throwing it off slightly, the new tyre, all sorts of different things that can create this. So by balancing them, it means obviously the steering is going to work perfectly. 
remove the sticker so you've got no weight that's uh, distorting it in any way. And this machine just spins the wheel around and perfectly balances it out. And by doing this with all four sort of wheels on the same machine, they're all going to end up being set up nicely and you've got all sorts of tiny little weights that you put on the, uh, on the wheel um, if anything needs slightly recalibrating. Machines reporting exactly what needs to go where. Tiny little pieces to attach on the inside. You won't know there, but the machine will then be uh, the wheel will then be balanced out properly. Badge popped in and off to the car. It's all lined up so that the bolts can go straight in without having to. Uh, Search around for them, the one at the top first, reverse the process, just make sure it holds in. Loosely tighten it, there will be a final sort of tightening process and then pop in all of the other bolts. Final part, talking up the various nuts to the correct number, which we've looked up is 74 pound foot, 100 newton meters will be done when the car is back down on the ground. That's held it tightly. We'll now get a once over, get that final talking done, and then it's gonna be ready to take outside. She goes on the new rubber then. Now, unfortunately for me, <laughs> trying out my winter tires, today is not exactly the best conditions because it is dry and not desperately cold. But the one thing I do know is it's not gonna be long until the weather is bad. And that's when I'm gonna be able to report a little bit more about these. Now, with all new tires, you have to be a little bit careful when you're sort of driving them for the first time, at least the first couple of hundred kilometers because they're not 100% ready. Um, they need sort of some bedding in. Uh, so I have to be a little bit delicate with that. Um, but what I'll do now is I'll take the car home. I'm actually going to be storing my old tyres at my home. Um, of course, a venue like this, um, like Pro Tire, can store your tyres for you. If you wanted to have winter summer tyres, you can alternate them um, and literally keep the winters here in summer and the summers here in winter and just come in and book an appointment twice a year. So that's quite easy. I'm not going to be taking my old tyres home in the FF because the cream interior would not go down well with that at all. And I don't want to make a mess of it. So I'm going to take this car home, bring back another car, um, to take the tyres back because um, I'm going to store them at home in my garage for the next uh, next couple of months until we're round, back around to summer. Um, but yeah, I'm going to drive the car home. I'll give it a little bit of thought. Wow, it just got really windy. Maybe it is winter. Maybe it is winter after all. Right, I'm going to drive home. Guess what? It's England and it started drizzling. It's a bit wet now and of course that's what the tyres are for. So I'm going to have a test on my way home of how the grip is. But for the initial drive, actually I was expecting traction to light up and stuff, being new tyres, slightly pushing it just to try to sort of learn where the boundaries are and what they can do. But no, grip absolutely fine. Obviously not gunning it by any means. This car is an insanely powerful car and you can't properly gun it on a road. Um, not on an English road anyway. Um, but what I'm planning next, so I'm going on a ski holiday to Val d'Isère in the French Alps, which is a place that's sort of close to my heart because before I got into this car stuff on my YouTube channel, I actually used to have a whole load of skiing videos. Um, you might already know this if you've been following for ages, but way back I used to be a ski instructor and I learned to ski in Val d'Isère, so it's like my home away from home. Um, I love that place, had an amazing time. Um, and we go back, or I go back still with my family for holidays um, every couple of years. Um, so I used to drive down there a lot. Back when I had my Renault Clio with snow chains, and then I had a BMW 1 Series 123D, and I used to have snow tires on that car, and had a lot of fun with those down there. So this is the first time actually since then that I've put snow tires on a car. Um, I think that's probably been maybe six years, seven years now. Um, so I'm thinking that rather than fly down, flights are booked, I'm 
possibly going to take the car. I've got a decision to make. It's due to snow a lot this weekend. It's due to snow something like 65 centimetres worth in a day. So just to put that into perspective, that's about as high as the wheel probably. Um, if that happens, I think I'm not going to be driving the Ferrari. Maybe I'll get there, wait for the right day, play around. Um, I think it would be a lot of fun. The car has a through load system. It's obviously super comfortable for these long drives. The only downside is that with all the trips I've got planned and the trips I've already done, it would leave me with having owned a car, this car when it gets to nine months old, so in six months time, and I'll have done about 12,000 miles on it. The average Ferrari driver does about 3,000 miles in a year. Um, obviously it has Ferrari seven year service pack, so that's not a problem. Tires I'm not too worried about because I'll swap these back to the normal P0s after. Purely the mileage on the car, which if it wasn't for what the next person would think, I wouldn't care because I buy these cars to drive them, enjoy them. Gosh, it's quite windy right now, sorry about that to drive them, enjoy them, love them, and just have fun with them. But unfortunately in the UK, we have a really, really sensitive market to mileage, especially on Ferraris, just whatever the number is, the outright number. Even though it shouldn't matter too much, because if you sit on a motorway for a thousand miles, it's not exactly wearing the car hugely. So I've got a decision to make whether I'll take the car or not. And I'm sure you'll follow um, on my social media pages. And if you do, you will find out whether I have done it or not. Um, I think it'd be pretty cool, certainly even for the photos, to get this car out in the snow in Val d'Isère in France. Um, bit of a reminder actually, you might have remembered um, when Harry Metcalf used to do his Evo Diaries videos on the Evo TV YouTube channel, he took the Ferrari Press FF down to, uh, I think it was La Rossière maybe, just around the corner um, from Val d'Isère. Um, so I'm sort of like repeating his trip, which is quite fun, set with my own FF. Um, so yeah, we'll see what decision I make on that front. But either way, I'm hoping that during the period of this winter, I'll get a little opportunity to find some difficult terrain just to sort of report back on what it's like driving a Ferrari with winter tyres, the Soto Zeros. So uh, yeah, a big thanks to Pirelli for lining up um, the fitment today at Pro Tire, the Stortford Performance Tyres. Sorry, lots of wind. <laughs> I'm looking forward to now driving the FF with Soto Zero tyres on it. And uh, coming back to you again very soon with more updates. So thank you very much for watching. Make sure you stay subscribed. Follow the social media pages, Instagram and Facebook and Twitter and that stuff if you want to see my adventures in the car down to the mountains. That's it for now. I'll catch up with you very soon. Cheers. This is so special. This is so, so, so special.